Hello, I'm Terry David Mulligan, and this is Mulligan Stew, the podcast, music, film, food, and wine. I am working on the food part. I've had lots of wine, we've lots of music, lots of film, but now we need some food. I'm, I'm going to hunt down some favorite chefs of mine. In the meantime, back to the music base, and that is a very special friend. His name is Colin James. It was Stevie Ray Vaughan who was passing through the prairies in Alberta, specifically Regina, and his opening act had not shown up. This was before Stevie was like a big deal, like a really big deal. And Colin James was the local guitar slinger in Regina, and he said, I'll do it, Mr. Bond, and he did. And Stevie liked him so much, he took him on the road, had him open for him all the way across Canada, and encouraged him. And that's all that uh, Colin James needed. He just kept playing and singing, getting better and better and better and better and finding fans all over the world. And this most amazing thing happened. After he had done his live album at the Commodore, which basically said, here's all the songs that I've recorded up to this point live in concert. Now we're going to head off in a different direction. And he released two blues albums, Blue Highways and Miles to Go. And amazingly to Colin, they were a huge success. He got played down in the States in places where he had never been played before. He literally just swept the Blues Awards in Canada and then won the Juno for Best Blues Album of the Year. He's now on a cross-Canada tour, and it was time to sit down and talk to him. We're backstage at the Port Theatre in Nanaimo. Colin James. <laughs> On the dashboard, baby, take a ride and come on There's nothing left to lose but the moon Now the money's all gone and When you get back, you get back down Wait all night for you to come around I'd like to get to know you, but you're 40 light years away Come a little closer, but you're falling light years away. What you gonna do, honey, now that the sun's gone down? Trying to find love when you're living in one horse town I've had the blues for 14 days Cause there's a hole in the sky and it's here to stay I'd like to get to know you but you're 40 light years away I wanna get to know you but you're 40 light years away I keep knocking but I keep coming 
came to get you home, but you're folded like years away. I need to get you back, but you're folded like years away. I want to get to know you, but you're folded like years away. I need to get to know you, but you're folded like years away. Let's go straight to something I'm dying to know about. You go into the Blues Awards 2019 and you literally sweep it. They lift you on their shoulders and carry you off into the night. You win the Juno for Best Blues Album. You win it all. What were you thinking about going in? What was it like? What was the journey like? <laughs> well, it started with, my, with, with the previous record, Blue Highways. You know, it really, um, the decision to... Um, you know, I've always loved the music, but it's either being kind of couched in the little big band or it was, um, you know, a definite acoustic thing with Colin Linden where it was, you know, more of an acoustic flavor. You know, this time we were just going to go and play electric blues and that was it. And, and you know, uh, it kind of, you know, spurred a kind of a new um, thing as far as um you know records that have that kind of focus are always are always good that way because uh, you know exactly what you're getting into and um you can't do them forever however um it's been fun it's the journey so that's the journey that took us to miles to go and you know it, this band that i have out right now they're all such great guys first of all we get everyone gets along really great together that helps that helps a lot and uh yeah, we just have a, a, a riot, you know, and, and you don't. So there you go, you know, and, and the whole hope is to try to get some inroads in, in, in America and in, in, in Europe. And, you know, slowly we're getting some more um, looks and, and attention that way. I'm going to the Memphis Blues Awards this year really just to go meet people and shake hands. And uh, I think if I'm lucky, I might be presenting something which would be fantastic. Um, and uh, meeting more people and networking down there, but I'm kind of having a late career um, uh, career elsewhere too with the blues thing. So uh, it's been fun. You've told me before that uh, you get nominated for things, and and you're not really excited about it till you get there. And then when you get there, you realize that your peers are in the audience, that you're being held up as an example of where other younger players want to get to. Uh, you, you win those awards at the at the the Blues Awards, and then you win your Juno. What does it represent to you, though? I mean, well, it's fantastic. It's you know, it's obviously it's it's always really nice. You know, it's nice to be uh, appreciated, or at least it's nice to uh, to get that nod. However, you also know there's other people there uh, deserving, equally deserving. And and uh, Sue Foley this year, you know, she she's had a really great year, and she's doing great work, uh, lifetime of work. Um, so, you know, I don't like that aspect of it particularly. I wasn't there this year at the Junos because I had to come here and work, and that's the best reason I can think of for not going to the Junos is, is work, work, is playing for a living, and that's what I do. So, you know, so that was awesome. But, it, you know, it's nice. It's nice in the other regards. I mean, for me, it had been 20 years since uh, I won one uh, in 1999. So I went through all of, uh, you know, 2000 until 2018. That's an 18-year uh, uh, thing. So, and uh, it was 30 years from the time I, I from the other night's uh, thing to 30 years from Most Promising Artist from 89. Isn't that funny, right? So uh, it's just all very interesting. But, you know, the main thing now is uh, it's just so great to be, you know, I just feel so fortunate to be on the road with, with such an able band uh, that played on my records. So they're exactly and and Steve Mariner's out with playing harp and bringing all that that he brought to these records. Tell people how important it is to find the right guys, the right people to make that music, the chemistry that's necessary to bring this off. Well, I think you know at a certain time in your life you want to be around people that you like, and uh, so that's a number one. 
and then the rest of it's of course important uh, uh, but and it's funny with this band because a lot of the guys had either listened to me as they grew up because um, they're you know slightly younger than than I uh, in the band and uh, <laughs> it's like you know uh, uh, and uh, some of them had done one of the songs in a grade 10 high school you know presentation or whatever I think and uh, I think the other guitar player Chris Cadell did National Steel in grade 10 in his Belleville Ontario uh, talent thing so that's awesome I think you know and and Steve came and saw me Steve Mariner came and saw me when he was 13 or 14 at the I think the did he tell me it was Ottawa Blues Festival or something and said to me, I'm gonna, I can play really good. You're going to play with me sometime. <laughs> or something, I apparently I tossed him off. <laughs> no, I, w- I would never do that. But I was like, oh, great, you know. Anyway, he's, uh, he's fantastic. So th- there you go. Um, Jesse O'Brien out of Hamilton on keyboards. He's kind of grown up in that Hamilton music scene. His dad was a musician in Hamilton and uh, kind of grew up with a bit of uh, friends of the band, you know. So he's a, he's a treat. And Jeff Hicks on drums has been playing with me off and on. Yeah, and he's such a good field drummer, you know. He listens so carefully. Mind your step as you make your way Church into this world of sand Picture an angel with a cigarette burning With a long slow drag She welcomes you in where you'll be Dancing in the low light Sweat dripping down like a dew Scratching metal and a crying moan And lightning in a bottleneck at the back of the room Fire! Fire from the inside rhythm Like a hurricane rain bursting Comes after midnight While you're watching me down With the sound of your national steel Crooked smile on a wild rose Born in the heat of the south her kisses, they went to my head like whiskey She was bootleg in love with the stockings rolled down People cried as a wolf started to howl Howl like a midnight train Roll on, roll on, roll like a river A shot of burning silver Pounding through my feet like fire Fire from the inside rhythm like a hurricane rain mercy Comes after midnight Washing me down with your national steel Your step as you make your way from the church into this world of sin. Picture an angel with a cigarette burning, a long slow drag. She welcomes you in when you're dancing in the low light, with the sweat dripping down like a dew. Scratching metal with a crying moan, lighting in a bottle in the back of the room. Fire, yeah, fire from the inside rhythm Like a hurricane rain Mercy comes after midnight Wash me down, washing me down Fire, 
coming inside rhythm Like a hurricane rain Verse comes after midnight Wash me down with the sound of your national steel National steel You ask a lot of yourself. I know you do. You you have st- very very high standards for yourself and what is you and what is not you. What what you can play, what you want us to hear, and what you don't want us to hear. The band has to buy into that as well. I mean, they uh, you you ask a lot of the people around you to make the quality of music. You have standards. Sure. Well, sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but that's the thing. Everyone in this band is is. Is, is great that way, so it's just not an issue. Uh, so, uh, all of this hardware aside, I mean, it's, it's a great run. It was incredible to go from those two award shows, then all of a sudden you're on the road, and all of a sudden it's all just unfolding, and, uh, and your year is starting to set itself. You have this album you can play, all of your, your school of work. I'm looking at your set list here. Um, what's the oldest one? Uh, Five Long or Why'd uh, You Lie? I guess well, Why'd You Lie and Five Long are both super old. Uh, uh, I can remember the day they came out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five Long I wrote in a park across from uh, Joe's Cafe, and I'd just come off the road, and I just went across the street for like an hour and a half, I think, and sat in a park, and, and it was actually kind of, had a bit of a country lilt to it at the time. And, uh, but I worked with Bob Rock, and we rehearsed the other day in the, at Little Mountain, in the freaking room. Where we cut Little Big Band uh, One, and we cut Why'd You Lie in Five Long Years. It was the first time I ever worked with a producer with with Bob, you know. So that was cool. In fact, Bob, well, we worked hard on Five Long Years, Bob and I. But uh, so that was really nice to be back in the old studio. Didn't you uh, Didn't you play Joe's for a while? No, I didn't play at Joe's. I would go to Santos Tapas across the street, and just like they would lend me money. I think Santos let me run up about 300 bucks back in those days because I was always like, hey, man, you know, could you, like, just, like, I'm a little hungry. Could I run up a tab? I think Joe ran a tab at Joe's Cafe. He let me run up some money. I always go and thank him. How long did you busk? Well, everywhere I went from the age of, like, 18 or 16, 16 on for any given period of time, apart from going to Manpower a few times, it was better for me to go up in front of the liquor board store or in the subway. So I would do it when I needed it, you know, because you could make 40, 60 bucks in a day or, or more. It's just something I didn't particularly like, but it saved me in a few places where that was kind of no choice. I wonder if you had one of these moments. I'll tell you this Jan Arden story. She's doing, I think, the Christmas album at Warehouse Studios with Bob. And Bob's doing some mixing and twiddling around as he does. And she's looking out the window and all of a sudden she realizes that she's looking at the doorway that she spent two Christmases in. Uh, one of which, the first year, some guy punched her as he walked by. He was drunk. In Vancouver. In Vancouver. She's looking at the doorway that she froze her ass off to, do, to busk for two years oh in Vancouver. God. And I'm kind of thinking, have you had that? that- Nothing like Christmas PTSD. Jesus. Have you had a moment where you've gone by one of your old locations and had an ep- epiphany? Uh, uh, like that? Well, well, sure. Well, I've played so many venues, so, like certain venues, so, uh, many times over. So you, you go there and you go, oh, you know, it's like it's layers of years, you know. So sure, yeah, yeah. Mm. The uh, Commodore, for instance. For instance, the Commodore. Yeah, yeah. 
played out front? I wish they didn't tear down the one in Montreal, though, the Spectrum. That was a shame. They never should have. But you did play outside, right? In Vancouver? Vancouver at, oh. at the Commodore? Well, yeah, you know, I played in Granville Island. I played on a bunch of the metros in Montreal, uh, Osborne Village in Winnipeg, Toronto, just kind of anywhere I could, but not as much there. Mostly in Montreal. Vancouver, I worked the car wash, you know, on the one on 4th Avenue in Kitsilano. The one that, uh, there's an elephant or something. It's yeah. like, well, yeah. I had to, if you went there at 6 in the morning, you had a job. So you could work all day in that car wash. And I did a few days there. Um, I did some furniture moving in Vancouver for a while, too. You could have been the best furniture mover <laughs> in the world, man. Um, you, you and I had a conversation uh, when, uh, when uh, uh, this album came up. Uh, and and you said this is the second of two. I'm doing these two blues albums. You were, you were kind of shotgunning some some ideas. And you said, but when we're done, uh, I'm gonna then I'll start to re- uh, write in Nashville. I'll, I'll find Tom. We'll 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 start to head back in the direction of rock and roll. Has the success of these two albums has it changed that plan for you? Well, it wasn't necessarily rock and roll actually, because it, it, where I'm thinking. My only thought is you can't, you, no, I don't want to do another record of Strictly Covers. So, it, it, and I, I've never been to kind of, I don't have to write everything. It's never been a, a prerequisite for me. However, it's nice to put in, you know, at least five or six if you can. And, um, you know, that could be anything uh, stylistically. And, you know, and lately we've done the record um, uh, Hearts on Fire two, three records ago was more of a Colin Linden ambient Production and there's no reason we can't go back in that direction with someone uh, I've worked with in the past, whoever that may be. Um, you know, so I love producers who push you a little bit to get out of your comfort zone, and I think you know uh, that can be done quite easily because you know between gospel and 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 be- all the beautiful music's out there, uh, I know there's a right guy for it, and I just think I oh, wouldn't write write anyone for it, and I think we just now just got to pick the right. Um, the right songs, you know. Have you heard uh, Tom's 40 Light Years? Well, we wrote that together. No, so. but I mean, have you heard the version? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. Oh, my God, yeah, Tom. Well, he always puts out the stuff we write together. I always ask him, just give it a month or two, Tom. Yeah. But it's so funny. Over the, we've wrote and, written so many songs over the years now, Tom and I. It's crazy. Freedom? Freedom and... Um, Oh my God! And a lot of them uh, were cut by Black and the Rodeo Kings, yeah. and, and uh, Lucinda sang on one. That was my favorite. Lucinda Williams sang uh, uh, "If I Can't Have You," and, and we wrote that in Toronto. But uh, years of doing that, I love writing with it with Tom.
about producers you lost a great friend of yours oh, joe hardy oh it was so terrible you know i love joe and uh, just love him dearly and his wife trish is awesome and i hadn't seen trish for a while and it all happened really fast uh last we had we shared a couple he plays bass on the new billy gibbons record so we were talking about that because we were both on the same blues chart within two not things of each other i said hey joe i were and he just got sick really, really fast. And that was that, you know, so uh, terrible. And, and I, I think about how he did Little Big Band, too. And that's personally, I'm so proud. <laughs> I'm so proud of Joe for that. Not like Joe has to be, have people proud of him, but he's always known more as a rock guy. And he, although he did a lot of that early is easy top. So he's good at all of that. Depends who he's working with. However, he has a predilection to pretty, um, he's a very good technician. So the sky's the limit. What, what did he bring to your music? Well, he brought Just Came Back's mix, if you listen to that. Like, just, he loved delay, did not love reverb. And uh, so if you ever stopped a Joe mix, everything stops at different times because it's all on delays. Um, and he liked a vocal to sit right in the middle, like dry and in your face. So if you listen to Tom Cochran's, Life is a Highway, or My, or My Just Came Back, or Copperhead Road yeah. uh, by Steve Earl. He just had a way to make a vocal pop. And when I decided to use him, to work with him on Little Big Band 2, 
I, I just, we get along so well as people that I thought, well, I'll use Joe, knowing that inside I thought, but this is period music from like the late 40s, maybe not the best marrying, but he proved, I love the sound of that, like Marianne on that record, the Ray Charles track, I think he just killed the mix on that. So I think he rose to the occasion and he didn't date it with reverb, yet he didn't, uh, he used his skills the way he would with music it, uh, appropriate to the to the era how's it going how are you feeling oh having so much fun man i got this new 335 i bought last year and i didn't have a chance to play it a lot last summer i only played explain it. what it is because you're like colin cripps you're you're a geek about guitars just tell me what a 335 well, is as, when i was 16 i opened up a john lee hooker and george thurgood that year and i always played a 335 for about two or three years of my life that's all i would play gibson yeah gibson yeah it's a hollow body bb king guitar uh, uh, and Freddie King. Um, and it's just, you know, beautiful. They just have a resonance and a, and a tone and a roundness to them that nothing else has. And uh, I, I got rid of it early on because it was too heavy to schlep around. I had a really heavy case that was, I, and instead of thinking, well, I'll change the case, I just went and traded it in for some strat, some modern strat. It was a terrible idea. So it took me this long in my life to get a new Gibson. So I bought that one last year. And, and uh, uh, what a pleasure. So we've done two shows, uh, playing with such a great band. And, and the fun thing is, as you go, you start going, hey, why don't we try this and why don't we try that? The book is so, like when I sent out this thing, you see this 20-song list here. But w there's a list that went beyond it of overflow. And it's just massive. And now it's just a question of you know, challenging ourselves and you know, not falling into ruts. And if we feel we've done something too much, blow it out and try to you know, put some... Uh is this, uh, are these 20 songs for us, or they're for you, or That's what for both? Doing tonight. That's no, no, but I mean, uh, do you make this list out as what you guys want to play, or what we're oh, expecting? No, no, no. I mean, it's a bit of everything, right? You know, I mean, over, it's a bit of everything. Sometimes you do a decision because, you know, you, you, you know sometimes people might want to hear something you can't put any love into it anymore. So sometimes there's a song moratorium, you know, and it's just the way it goes. Uh, you change it as it goes. You try to keep it fresh, that's all. This audience, do you think you found a, a new audience with the blues albums back-to-back? -back? Yeah, probably, you know. I think, uh, uh, I think you know, it's not unlike the little big band records, yeah. if I look at the an age span sometimes, I'm shocked at how many young people really dig the little big band records, too. You know, it's like there's a, you know, yeah, I, I think it's there's a wide range. So now, as you head... Uh, think about heading for the states. Who? What do you? Wh which of you do you think that they would be interested in the uh, the sort of blues guy that uh, we for the last couple of, or or the or the guy who can actually rock the shit out of the stage? <laughs> well, it's all going to be part and parcel. You know, I I think maybe some songs they don't have the history with. I uh, wouldn't be as apt to play if I was say you flew me to a blues festival and. Tucson, Arizona tomorrow, I'm probably not going to be playing five more years. There you go. But you would, <laughs> but you'd play uh, maybe um, Boogie Funk? Oh, Boogie Funk for miles. I'll even do, you know, I'll even do Just Came Back because I, you know, I'm fine with that. Keep on loving me, baby. I always loved anyway, so no, no problem. You know, voodoo thing I go off and on. With five long years, I like, but I, I don't want to play it all the time. Yeah. But other than that, that's it. And I can take that. You know, you're happy to have a hit in the first place, so you got to be thankful, yet not do things that don't inspire you anymore, you know, so you have to play that.
I know that the, the first thing I really knew about you was, was your guitar work. That, that, it pulled me right into the stage. How long did it take you to find your voice that, where you were really comfortable with your vocals and you could express yourself? Little Big Band 1. And even though it was a little shallow and, and maybe a little up in my throat, I think it was the start of me singing better. Because I think, you know, those first two records, I just wasn't quite there yet. And I listened to stuff like Why'd You Lie Five Long Years, and I sound kind of like Chip Monkey a little bit. And it, you know, my, my son always laughs at me a little bit when he hears, uh... <laughs> in a good way, laughs at that. Stone, you laugh at your father. I made a note here. You actually said this to me. After I've got these albums done, I can move on now. So you're going you're gonna to move, I mean, that was you a couple of years ago. Well, you always have a theory. I, my theory is just I got to get some songs written and, and done and, and see what that looks like. When, really, you go to make great songs. When you get together with someone else, you really try to keep the palette open because you don't want to miss out. You don't want to say, I'm going to write a blues rock song that'll be acceptable by these people. <laughs> Because it's so narrowing, so you try to keep the field open. You could write a, a you know, an Appalachian. You just never know. Yeah. So you try to keep open yet realistic, and I guess that's the hardest thing about it is to keep there long enough to have those those ideas. It's never easy. Is, is it fair to say, a, a, a assumption on my part, that the people who liked you early on, with that little guitar flash, and then the the, the big the little big band, and then now the blues albums. They'll all be in that audience tonight, in in some form or another. They're all there, right? Yeah, because it's you they're after. Yes, and hopefully they'll bring their children, and they can bring their children. And yes, because we need everything we can get us musicians are now. You, because uh, it's like you know what's going on with Spotify. Are you seeing kids in the audience? You see families? Uh, you you know you don't always see it, but it is really awesome when you have a, uh, uh, some some younger people who kind of grew up with your music and just for, for whatever reason, never had a chance to see you. And I love that. And they all come out together. And that's, that's always awesome. Okay, now you're going to be in Alberta 27, 28. Uh, tell me about you and Alberta. Have, you, have we been good to you? My God, I've been playing, well, with Billy Cowsill, all those stampedes, 84, when we opened up with Katie Lang at the Palliser. Every time I walk in the Palliser, I remember that 84 gig, you know, playing with Billy. And uh, those days, we did a lot of Calgary playing. We did a lot of Sidetrack Cafe in Edmonton. I played there with David Bergen before that. I played the Edmonton Folk Festival in 84 with uh, Dr. John. I got the job to play guitar for Dr. John, which was insane because I was totally underqualified. But I stood there and somehow managed to make it, make it, uh, make it happen. <laughs> but that was amazing. I had to go to his hotel room in Edmonton before the show. Was that the rehearsal? Yeah, it actually was. Because I thought he was doing this. He, did, he had done this new jazz record with Maria Maldar, and I thought we were doing that kind of, this kind of like, you know, pretty basic jazz changes. And it turns out we were doing all those hits. like We're going to do gumbo. Uh, right place, right, right, all that. But I had not really had a chance to learn it. So we, I had to wing it. But it was what a, what a thrill. Uh, I'm looking at your year, by the way. Uh, Lethbridge Jazz Festival this summer. Mm-hmm. Um, that's uh, June 17 uh, another one July the 30th Wine Country Blues Festival in Woodenville that's, that's, uh, that's a big stage actually you've got you're sharing with I think Buddy Guy's on that stage yeah well yeah we're, uh, the, the, uh, we're playing with Buddy in, uh, in Montreal at the Jazz Fest there yeah yeah that's going to be really fun I'm looking forward to that yeah we play it's funny you know, after, after years of not seeing Buddy a whole lot because I knew him years there's pictures of him and I playing from a from long time ago. I didn't see him for quite a long time. And over the last five years, I've just seen him a lot. I see him on the blues cruises because we've been on a few of those now. And then we played a show with him last in Washington State last uh, year and uh, in Ontario. Uh, so, yeah, here we are again. I'll get back to that in a second. August 26th, the fair at the PE. You're going to be at the PE? Am I? Uh, August 26th, the fair at the PE, Vancouver, BC. Huh. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, that's exciting. Oh, that. Exciting news. Let me. Uh, who do you think? Um, just an aside here. Who do you think you, when you hear yourself play, even in recording live stuff, who do you think? Who do you remind you of in the way you play your guitar? Oh, I. You know, 
you try to channel what you can, and if you're in, if you're going through a phase where you're just loving something, you might channel that more than others, like an Albert King thing, or a, you know. Uh, but I don't know, man. I, 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 talk, I, I, you know, it depends on what your bent is right now, you know. And I, I think it really takes other people to notice the things that you do that might be a signature of yourself because you don't usually see it, you know. Have you got a have you got a, a project that you've wanted to do all these years and you've just kept putting it off because other things were keeping you busy? Uh, where you would head off in a in a, a direction that would surprise us? I'm really happy with it. You know, no, I'll just let it progress. There's not no far reaching thing like that. You know, I don't mind stepping into something new or, or, or interesting. And that could take on, like T-Bone, say I was working with, say T-Bone Burnett said yeah. he could do a record with yeah. me. I'd be open for anything in that regard. Five, you could go five different choices, whether it was, a, whether it was a gospel to bluegrass to, you know what I mean? Oh, brother. Yeah, yeah. So um, really, it's just, I, I love it all. Um, I'm going to let you go here, but here's the deal. Here's the deal. Uh, no, normally, I don't ask for a set list, but, but I wanted to see what this looked like on paper, these 20 songs and then the, the, uh, the uh, closer. Uh, it's your life on a piece of paper. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, man. It's like I remember in, in, in the early days, we, it was really hard to fill up the time. You know, you were putting like, let's do that one for 10 minutes, that'll, that'll work, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, it's just really interesting that uh, over the years how it, uh, it just collects. Have you started those new songs yet? Um, well, you always, you're always writing lists. You're always thinking about how that, what form that takes, and then, uh, and then you hunker down. So, you know, we're still kind of just supporting this record. And I always have a way of cracking the whip on myself eventually do you pack a notebook uh no i do most things digitally now i don't really uh write physically i do use ipads and recorders on iphones and you made a comment last time we talked about uh how uh there's this little nugget uh that every once in a while you'll you'll go maybe it's just a chord maybe it's just a chord a rep repetitive chord but you you remember i'm gonna that's a good one i'm gonna put that off to the side titles covers like, I, if I find a good cover, I write it down immediately with four stars beside it, you know, because uh, then you're ready the next time. I have a, I have a little big man four list going, and I, I always have lists. All right, here's your, here's your hard questions. These are hard, like choosing children. The three best blues guys you ever heard. Jolly Hooker, just because he sounds just like... Years and years and years of just ancient, beautiful music. It's just in him, you know, so deeply. It didn't matter what he played. It was just beautiful, you know. Um, uh, love John Lee. Uh, uh, I personally love John Hammond Jr. just because I personally have gleaned so much from him. And I think he's underrated in every single regard. I, as a guitar player, he's just, and his harmonica playing is so fantastic. His best album, Wicked Grin, maybe? I love Wicked Grin, but I love mileage. Personally, I love mileage. I think that's my favorite. But it got me through my teens, you know, and it also got me jobs, kind of playing the songs that he liked to play. Third? See, that's hard because Stevie has to be in there because Stevie was the realization of all the other people I liked all in one. If I had to pick them all apart, then you have to get into the Three Kings and, and you know, you know, Freddie King, B.B. King, uh, um, Albert King. And Albert's the real trickster boy. He's so good. All of that. And then you have the singers. So, I, you know, Otis Rush meant a lot to me because I've had success with one of his songs. His voice had all that pain in it. So I, I'm doing a song tonight that we're just doing for fun because it's Otis Rush and it just sounds so... I just love his stuff. Cool. Muddy Waters. I, I can't... Is, it can't stop. Muddy, we can't live without money. A word to your fans. Uh, you can't talk to them all at once. You talk to them one room at a time. But uh, anything you want to... Any messages you want to send out there, now's your chance. Oh, man. Well, I just thank you at any given time. You know, like I still get to go out and play 
and do what I've always loved to do uh, for a living. Um, and uh, it's taken, you know, it's just, I'm so appreciative. I, I, to get these guys on the road like this, it's, a, it's, a, it's an undertaking, but it's a beautiful undertaking. And, and for us, it's just, you get, every night you just get a little stronger and it's the best. Congratulations on the awards. Thank you. Colin James in conversation on Mulligan Stew podcast. I do know that there's a Matt Anderson interview coming our way, but I promise I'll go find some star chefs for you, for you foodies out there. Thank you to Colin. Thank you to his team. Thank you to the Feldman Agency for putting us all together. And thank you for subscribing to Mulligan Stew, the podcast on Spotify, Google Play Music, and Apple Podcasts.